What is up, everyone? Thanks for coming by to our episode number one of the Today's Angler podcast. I'm Lee Talkin. And I'm Robbie Jarnigo. This is uh, interesting. This is a little different. Um, this is um, obviously video-based podcast, and also you guys can stream it anywhere on, um, you know, hopefully we'll have it on Spotify, uh, Apple Music, and what's the other one? Podbean. There's a lot of, it's, that's a nice little free streaming service there, so... If you don't want to watch us, you can uh, just listen to us, I guess, if that's what you're into. I don't know. <laughs> this is all totally new. Uh, all different, yeah. Totally. Um, See how it goes. All, all I know, it's been really cold lately. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> yeah, we thought so this brutal. would be a perfect opportunity yeah. to get started uh, uh, with this. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I don't know. It's probably about five down here. How about up there, Robbie? Well, I know um, Heidi went in, went into work yesterday, and she got in her car at like seven o'clock, and it said negative forty degrees out. <laughs> it's not good. In Is the that car. like a record? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it was on her car. I mean, I'm sure it gets has gotten colder since. The, I don't know, but yeah, not 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 good in the seven one five. It has been brutal. <laughs> not not good fishing, fishing times. I haven't been out. Just been building baits. <laughs> Which is yeah, interesting. yeah, it sounds familiar. <laughs> yep, <laughs> kind of doing the same thing. But yeah, no, that we're just hoping this is going to be like a cool way to uh, interview people that just, I mean, the way Zoom is nowadays, it's like we could interview anybody across the world, pretty much, fishing wise. So, <laughs> it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so. Let's see here. I forgot what I was going to say already. <laughs> so, you know, this is different. This is totally different than than a regular uh, fishing video. You can make a lot of different cuts and edits. <laughs> no, I think it'll be cool. Or we've got uh, some, obviously we're going to start out our first one with just Robbie and I and see how it works out. Hopefully everything goes smooth. And then of yeah. course we'll be having some of the other people on like Larry Ramsell. I know Pete Mayna kind of chimed yep. in. Yep. Um, and Steve Herbeck. That'd be cool. Yeah. Her yep. <laughs> Herbie's on board, wants to do it. Um, so yeah, we'll just have a, multitude of different people that uh of, and i think it'll be neat to kind of pick the, obviously it'd be cool to pick their brains but basically to maybe even have a topic like steve herbeck will talk about eagle lake specifically or things like that you know we'll have topic matter which by the way yep. if you want to list uh, uh go down in the comment section uh, on if you're on the youtube uh, you know, let us know what is, you know, a bunch. Yeah, I can talk. <laughs> let us know what's of interest to you guys. Yeah, for I'm sure. sure. Yeah, uh, I'm actually nervous a little bit. I know, I am too. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Why would I be nervous? <laughs> right. it be it's only, we've only got, what, almost 400 videos out there, so. But actually, it's well over 400. Is now. it? Wow, that's pretty I just nice. looked it up the other <laughs> really? day. Really? Oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so crazy. at any rate. Uh, comment below what uh, what kind of topic matter or vet, uh, guess uh, do you have in mind? What would be cool? Uh, we're open to ideas, of course. Yeah, like an awesome breakdown of Lake St. Clair with some of the guides out there. There's a lot of options. That's just what's so awesome about this this little platform. We could discuss anything. That's what's exciting about it. Not just the normal go out fishing and uh, see if we catch a fish style video. Uh, let's see here. I've got... Um, I've got a couple things. Uh, basically, what I was thinking, just maybe start these out with a little bit of musky news or, uh, you know, just little sure. tidbits that we might be able to share. Uh, one of the things uh, we wanted to share with you quick is that muskyshop.com has got a brand new website. If you guys have not checked that out, I know they just had a 15% off sale this past weekend, but now you can go on the musky shops website and everything uh, is live inventory. So you can uh, click on there and see what, if there's a particular, particular color you want, you can check that out and see if they have it in stock. So um, imagine trying to put 30,000 different <laughs> items on a website. Uh, it was an undertaking, I'm sure. Yeah, that's a lot of product. <laughs> that's insane. Um, also, there's going to be a musky show, guys. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, the musky bash. <laughs> yeah. Yep, in uh, Wausau, uh, same location as um, years past, right? Yeah, and that nice little yes. 
That's it. Yep. It's okay. going to be in Ross, Ross child. And that's the, uh, central Wisconsin convention expo center, I believe is, uh, the name of it, but yeah, same as Wausau Muskie yeah. expo for those of you familiar with that. So that's cool. Yeah. It'll be a, uh, uh, Friday night, Friday afternoon rather. And that's on the 19th of March and it'll go all day as well on Saturday. So they'll have seminars. Uh, there'll be, it's a little downsized version of the original Wasa show, yep. but, uh, yeah, no, it should be a pretty awesome deal. And, uh, definitely looking forward to a musky show. I think something I think Robbie might be. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll be, uh, enjoying the Florida weather. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. After this winter, um, I'm, I'm ready for Florida very soon here. <laughs> this last two, three weeks. <laughs> well, I'll do some camping down there, but you might be able to make it right for a day, maybe half a day. Uh, yes, I was uh, most likely planning on being there for the day on Saturday. That's okay, the plan right on. now. So, yep. Um, no booth, right? Uh, no, I think, I think, yeah, that was a great question, Rob. <laughs> I'm a little tight on uh, product sure. right now. Uh, if yep. I have uh, some extra, I will bring some. But sure. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'll have a booth or not. Yeah, so. yeah. Now that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll leave some information on that. Yeah. Uh, you can go to the Wisconsin Muskie Expo Facebook page uh, and get that type of information off of that. And obviously watch your, watch your social and we'll be putting stuff out prior to. That's, uh, that'll be fun. Bummer, I, I won't be there, but, uh, you know. Yeah, shut up. Cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a couple other things. Uh, I know that the uh, Chaos Tackle has come out with a bunch of brand new custom colors. Uh, we <laughs> yeah, we got it. That's the new color for TA. And that's uh, basically a white base with a pink tail on top. A couple chartreuse tails uh, will be available in actually baits across the, the chaos brands. It'll be the Poseidon. It'll be their jerk based top waters, uh, Navin yeah, and whatnot. So pretty cool. Yeah. That's a funny custom color. That color is kind of old. It's kind of old. I mean, when, when did you come out with that? Remember the, the, I don't know. I don't, you guys probably don't. Yeah. Somebody will remember. Somebody out there has seen it. Or yeah. From the Chris Bula special water chopper, mini chopper. Uh, right. That was a cool color. That was a cool chapter. I, you don't even have one of those, do you? I don't have one. Yeah. No. Gosh, that's There's a funny. lot of them I don't have. Wherever Mr. Chris Bueller went. He was in our video yeah. a couple days ago. <laughs> yeah, just a little reboot of uh, yeah. yeah Green Bay footy with two over 50 in a day. That yep. Amazing night, no doubt. Yeah. Kind of did just... that on a whim as well. Yeah. <laughs> That was a funny night. Gosh, that was one of one of the coolest, coolest things to happen. And then uh, doing that over and over again, night fishing out there. I don't think I've caught one since that night. <laughs> so, Truth be told, we felt like it is. Man. Yeah, it was a good idea that night. That's all I got to say. But um, uh, let's see. Yeah, else? so the new chaos stuff. Um, let's see. They've also got chaos has got the. 10 foot rods in the 2020 series with the revolution seats. That was oh, that's right. Kind of cool. Um, so new product there. Yeah. Uh, 10 foot good. rods. I don't know what I think yeah. about that. It seems like a lot of rod for me. Oh. <laughs> be... Yeah. No kidding. What is that? Twice, <laughs> twice your length. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be hitting bottom in the bottom of the one. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, 10 foot rod. That's, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, what that's else? wild. There's a, uh, We've got uh, uh, number 12 Boilermakers are in stock at Muskie Shop and my website as well. Uh, something new, you know, we had a video this past fall where yep. uh, we had some action. Actually, I <laughs> caught the first fish on it was a nice 45 yeah. inch. with no net, of course. Yep, of course. Yeah, that would have been a nice one to grab. But um, yeah, no, that more on. very cool this, this September or even in uh, early October since uh, sure. I kept one together and it was a cool little bait for nighttime fishing not a little bait i shouldn't say that that's a size 12 blade but yeah it's, it's a big that bait. that single 12 is not even that bad 
no, no, unless you try to rip it or whatever. But yeah, uh, yeah. Um, what else? Uh, of course. Uh, what about you, Robbie? What about yeah. the door? Something special. Something special. Don't have one here. Horseshoe. The horseshoe. I guess I'll just kind of stand up here. Um, yeah, tune number eight. Bucktails side by side with each other. Um, Fifty nine wire. And it is uh, definitely an interesting bait. Just trying to get it over the bag here. I guess I could switch to this camera possibly. And you guys could see it on the computer. But uh, cool. I mean, you'll be able to throw two different colors at one time. Um, definitely an interesting thing. Kind of caused a little stir on Facebook this week, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there's always somebody that's going to Something, right? <laughs> it's Winternet, right? Your internet, yeah. Just kind of, yeah. That's how it goes, I guess. But anyways, don't have to go into that. Maybe we do. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we... Uh... We'll have uh, or you had some action on that on St. Clair, got some fish yep. in the boat, man. There was one day on Claire uh, that basically all the action we had one yeah. day was on that bait. We, we yeah, threw no. everything else, Mark and I, and it was not squat happening on anything yeah. else. So pretty cool. Yeah, so that'll be interesting. I'm excited to yeah. see what that thing really does for everyone. But keep in mind, it's not legal in every state. No, no disclaimer. Yes, <laughs> not. Definitely not in Minnesota, so don't don't get caught with that. That would be bad. I, I would feel bad about that. There may be a Minnesota version though coming up. Yeah, gotta just kind of figure that one out a little bit, and hopefully get that all dialed in. So it's because it is an interesting bait. Why not two buck deals at one time instead of just one? Right, makes sense to me. Yeah. The Alabama rig has proven itself. Right, so. right, totally. So same concept. Fun. Um. Other than that, uh, one final thing, we always forget to kind of mention this. Obviously, we ask you guys to subscribe to us. That uh, definitely helps us. But we never really mention our other social um, you know, avenues. You can reach us, uh, Facebook, whether it's Lee or Robbie's or Today's Angler Facebook page. Please give us a like on there. That would be helpful. Uh, and then Instagram as well. We never tell this one. That we're no, no. On Instagram. <laughs> yeah. active there as well. So. Yep. Uh, send us a dm whatever yep. it's always good yeah that's definitely the easiest way to get a hold of us through those dms private messages that way um yeah in the youtube comments everything kind of gets a little covered up so right right that's the way you yep. but uh yeah I guess. let's see other than that i don't know should we uh we put out a post today uh looking for comments questions whatever uh, that you guys were interested in uh, so we'll just hop on over to the to the so share yeah and we'll start off on my personal uh, Facebook page and we'll go through some questions here and see what we can uh, dig up for answers uh, first one comes from Jason Smith of Smith's Fishing Outdoor oh, yeah. YouTube channel <laughs> of course he piped right in right away oh yeah so, um, <laughs> And of Gotta course, like you know, it's going to be a hard one or in depth or whatever. Yep, He's good at asking questions. <laughs> Big time. Uh, so Jason says, uh, netting. Uh, what if you uh, net high rim? So if you get a fish hung up on the edge of the edge of the deal, and then he goes into uh, bump board use, tools needed, time allowed out of the water, how to be prepared for quick photo sessions how to correctly water release so we yeah we could talk an hour on this yeah one, but all that subject holy cow <laughs> i wish i had yeah the in front of me that was a long question uh <laughs> yeah yeah so uh if you high you know get a fish hung up a high in the net uh the best thing to do right away is you know have the have your players obviously and try to get that fish unhooked as yep. quick as possible so its head isn't you know yeah, start, start snipping hooks and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Get that fish back into the water because that's that's that can be a struggle, especially for the big, bigger animal. That's not an easy thing. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's been a little more difficult for you as well, Robbie. As a <laughs> Jeez, as what a is late. what a season? <laughs> what a season of like, I I don't think did I botch one job though? I mean botched them, but did anything come off? I don't think so. No, I think you're yeah, it was Robbie. just really, really rough, but they somehow managed to stay on 
and get in the net. But yeah, what a brutal year of uh, netting muskies. But uh, hey, they got in the bag somehow. <laughs> okay, folks. So this is what's happening. Um, the harder fishing is for us, the more intense it gets to get that fish on oh, camera. Start and rushing then, everything. Oh, oh <laughs> we just freak out. It's musky yeah. blackout. Yeah. Yeah. That, so that's kind of where it's coming from. Like yep. back when we weren't even, when Robbie and I were fishing together, uh, we weren't shooting video, like a fish would just go in no problem, but right. now there's, the stakes are higher. It's so. insane. Yeah. Well, when you post over a hundred videos a year, then it tends to get harder. It's not just, you know, 12 shows for the whole season. It's uh, trying yeah. to musky every day, you come out there. So two, three times a week, it's yeah difficult girls because we don't want to be you know filming videos with nothing right put in them all the time which does happen but try to get a muskie in there every time yeah props to robbie for filming like a madman dude that's uh, yeah that's been a tough schedule yeah that was that was interesting it's a lot harder um <laughs> sorry oh you're good let's see bumper use uh tools you know wet your bump board uh, yep. tools you got your long nose pliers your nip x hook cutters um jaw spreader uh all the above all that stuff what am i missing robbie um yeah one thing i would like to say about bump boards is like if you got an extra if you're fishing three guys or two guys i mean even if you're taking pictures you can always have one guy helping the one dude with the tail so it just keeps that fish from flopping so bad which you know can be a struggle but you know you have that extra hand on that tail from a third per or a second person or a third person just sure. to control that fish i mean that just smooths out the process so much better but um but yeah by yourself it's always a wrangle <laughs> especially when they're over 50 inches right Rob? <laughs> yeah that's never good <laughs> yeah more the merrier when when the fish get yeah. <laughs> yeah back in the day it was like there was always the monkey in the middle fishing and now i love fishing three guys right four guys in a boat absolutely so um yeah that helps yeah that's let's see you know the biggest uh one other thing about uh release uh jason everyone would be to have a lockdown system for your net handle Ooh. so nobody has to hold the net handle i know yeah, brian crucial. gave of angling anarchy yeah he's he's shown some cool you know cool way to he's got it just built in his boat where it just locks it down and yeah yeah find, find a nice. good way yeah bungee wrapped around the a center seat or something it really doesn't need to be much right or, or fold it in between yeah, your seat. Yep. i think you do that on your lawn. yep yep that's really slick yeah but so okay we'll go next question here uh noah humfeld of uh madison who, angling who is that guy <laughs> yeah i know that dude <laughs> let's see he says top water tuning oh yeah. wow that's another video yeah and probably not to, we right. might need some water for that one not not frozen lakes yeah <laughs> no kidding uh let's see here roger Eklund, uh minnesota folk here he says oh, yeah. highly was going to start going to green bay not sure if it'll be early season, midsummer, early fall, late fall, huge body of water be intimidating. What are some of the travel patterns of muskies on the bay? And uh, what is their target forage base? Uh, let's see here. So, yeah, I mean, probably Follow the, the boats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Green Bay has uh, those fish move yeah. more than than like Lake St. Clair. Those fish move. A ton right. out there um yeah probably the hardest time to catch them is uh, later after the spawn when you're first getting into the warmer water period before they pulled in up shallow a lot of those fish are in open water just like they are a lot of the big right. minnesota lakes and so on just um, so happens it's a really big bay but yeah i guess if you had time to do it you could probably do something do some damage on it <laughs> Right now, a side image time, and everything. Yeah. Yep. Uh, probably the biggest tip I could give you at that time is go look for the walleye and perch fishermen. You know, I mean, the muskies are going to be out there where the food is. Yeah. Uh, and that's shad, primarily speaking. Uh, obviously, perch as well. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's uh, um, that pretty much wraps that. 
Um, yeah, it's intimidating. Uh, probably the biggest other factor to think about on big water fishing, any water fishing, but Green Bay uh, particular, St. Clair, uh, looking at uh, current. You're, you're watching wind currents out there. Uh, very important to key in on. That's a whole nother subject. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> Even if you are on top of them, it's always a <laughs> struggle to. Oh, get. yeah. <laughs> There's not that many fish to go around. Yeah, it, is right. Kind of the issue. Yep, so, they're just getting smarter and smarter every year. Yeah. But uh, let's see here. I'll uh, move on to uh, Todd from TNA Tackle, actually. Um, thanks, Todd. <laughs> Let's see, what are the best types of lakes, depth, size, structure for the first two weeks of the musky season in Wisconsin, both north and south? Yikes. Yikes is right. <laughs> oh, no. Can you tell me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let I us go know. out there and get chatted for the best. Oh, gosh, those are like the worst times ever. But uh, this, this spring, though, I will say it was an awesome early season May for us. Yeah. That's true. Fish over That's 40 true. inches is hard to come by, and uh, it was not so bad in southern Wisconsin. Um, what were the things that we were doing? Throwing crankbaits. Um, sure. Uh, gosh. Best type of lakes. Lakes Lake. with current. Yeah. Yep. Darker. That would be a, yeah. Lakes that warm up. Problem with our lakes, they stay, stay so clear throughout, throughout May, pretty much, and early June. But uh, yeah, I would say stained water, green. Stained, current. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if yeah, you're in. It has, it has a river coming into it. That right. would be a good plan of yep. attack. Yep. Or if you're just looking for one bite, you just troll the basin and hope for your best. <laughs> best option, I don't know. One big bite would be cool in May too. Let's see, if, if I were uh talking about southern lakes um you know try to find the smallest warmest shallowest lakes typically provide the best action early season um what about up north up north yeah i would say the same thing those shallower lakes that you know kind of turn i mean there is lakes up here that fire up right away and i think uh i was up here the opening day last year and my buddy joe he got like a nice mid thirties on a, a crankbait, just twitching some early cabbage. And I mean, we're fishing six, seven feet, well, not even seven feet of water. It's probably four to six feet of water. And, uh, we got some chopper bites, uh, had a lot of action that day follows and everything. Just, I mean, just a nice shallow lake that turns off during, uh, the heat of the year. So sometimes those smaller lakes with are shallow, they're, they're firing right away. So I don't know. Uh, and it seemed like the colder the spring we get, the better fishing it is. Yeah, I would say. I don't know. I would say so. Yeah, for at least a gradual climb into the into the summer months is nice too. But yeah, no last last spring wasn't too bad for a change. That was kind of nice. Yeah, sight fishing those muskies were cool. Oh yeah! Wow, Gosh. that was fun, flipping <laughs> believable. <laughs> so yeah, much fun that was interesting i'm excited to go try that up here if it's a cold spring hopefully it is yeah i don't mind that one bit let's see okay we'll go to uh alex weber uh predicting bite windows and ranking of factors weather moon time of day how many of those factors would you, would change bait selection i don't know bait selection i just yeah. throw whatever the hell i feel like throwing <laughs> yeah that's kind of where i'm at too uh one thing i will say from fishing a lot up here last year it was if you had two weeks of sun and then you had like three or four days and those two weeks that were cloudy those were the days that fishing was awesome and if it was vice versa even in the fall those cloudy days sucker fishing sucked oh, and then we get yeah. those couple sunny days and you know we, we actually caught fish those days which was you know, kind of reverse, but it seems like those days that are less likely in that, you know, two week period or something seem like to be the better ones. But I mean, this fall it was cloudy basically every day. And then we get some of those sunny days and it was game on. So I don't know that that was kind of, but 
I don't know if different day. Right. The different day. Yeah. Whether it was, yeah, that, that was interesting though. Um, what else? I, I can't think if I got like a pre storm musky this year, to be honest. Yeah. yeah that wasn't really a, yeah. Like, no, it didn't most, seem to be a thing. Sunny, sunny weather. Sunny was good. So hot those couple of weeks, which kind of, ugh, that yeah. was fun. Super hot and super cold right now. <laughs> um, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> um, well, uh, okay, we've got uh, Matt, uh, Matt McNelly. He has uh, one fishing rivers. Where do you have your best success? Depth, current, structure-wise, after the spawn. You think muskies? Uh, we'll just start there, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, boy, tough to beat fishing a dam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Granted, we don't do that often because uh, we don't want to blow right. spots up, even though they're pretty well shot after you know the last few facebook years <laughs> i mean you kind of figure right. out where everyone's fishing pretty much but yeah fish a dam there's a lot of fish there <laughs> um yeah if you don't have cameras i go for it <laughs> right yeah no exactly <laughs> obviously there's huge runs of muskies to any uh current situation you know bottleneck neck downs um yep. like the first flats below um you know, large wintering areas seem to be, uh, you know, a good, uh, uh, let's see, uh, like feeder streams, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just looking for, you know, flats that've got, that've got, you know, a lot of food and uh, right. stuff like that. So, right. yeah, um, big eddy spots. When it seems big, it seems always better. Like just big oh yeah moving the spots. megas yeah like that's just you can fish those all day long where your boat's not soaring down river canoe or whatever it is those seem like the the spots that hit oh yeah for sure yeah even like late fall last year we ran into some uh, yep. some really nice late fall fish and they were in the two biggest holes we could find basically yeah it was just so yeah it's game on <laughs> Uh, what would be let's see where did i um where find he continues to say where would we find large fish um he has no problem finding smaller ones and mm. just look for the those biggest the biggest holes like we just said biggest yeah. spots um that's definitely uh definitely key deal there uh brian keith anderson says Besides fishing and building baits, what do you like to do in your free time? Ooh, I like that question. About time you guys kind of learned something about us. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It's all fishing <laughs> questions here. Right. No, that's, uh, yeah, I guess. Want to go first? I'll go. No, you go first. All right. What, do I do? <laughs> what have I been doing lately? Oh, finally just started uh, snowmobiling this year. That's been a blast. That's what that's making winter actually not too bad up here. That's that's a fun time. Um, what else? I've never been on a snowmobile. Yeah, they freak me out. But how was that for a, a fun fact? <laughs> I'm, I'm a grandpa. <laughs> I, I don't feel like uh, yeah hitting a tree or anything like that. But uh, what else? Um, I don't mind cruises, watches of Netflix here and there. Um, Wow. What, what, what's your, yeah. What are you watching? Oh, what I've been watching last week, which I don't even know if to say it, but uh, was that Black Mirror show. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Holy cow. That's some not good, but wow. It really makes you think about the future. Holy crap. <laughs> kind of creeps you out. Yeah. yeah. That's a uh, Black Mirror on Netflix. Yeah. Black Mirrors. That's been good. Um, Heidi and I watched an awesome movie last night. The Nice Guys. You have to check that out, Lee. It was funny. Okay. We laughed our butts off. And uh, that's just a movie? Yeah, it's on Hulu. Yeah. Right on. The nice guys. Got like Russell Crowe in it. It was funny. I, I, okay. I did like I seen him for a while. I know, I know. It was a 2016 movie, but yeah, it was pretty oh, good. Oh, gotcha. But yeah, I'm the I'm the Black Mirror binge. And I don't know. Yeah. How I feel about I've rewatched them. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I think I remember you telling me. I don't know why it took this long to watch him, but yeah. 
when that when I'm all alone in the cabin up north, it's like, wow, that's some that's what's out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little different in the in the one five up there. <laughs> but yeah, how about you, Lee? Uh, well, what I really like to do, um, besides build baits and fish more, I'm gonna fish more this year. <laughs> Uh, it was kind of a challenging year, had a lot yeah. of stuff going on. Um, but no, some, one thing that uh, a lot of you guys might not know is I love cars. I am a car fanatic. Yep. Um, I wish I had some more cars, but I do have one car. We could even put a picture up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe. I have a 2011 uh, Camaro Super Sport, and it is in the rare center, uh, Synergy Green color which in my opinion is one of the coolest colors uh gm has ever come up with anyone's ever come up with sure. it's basically uh like a yeah, bright so like, kind of kelly green with uh a gold pearl over it it's uh this thing is mint it is it's only got about thirty thousand miles on it yeah and, you know in 10 years so it's a fairly low mileage car mm -hmm. it's got the six speed manual 426 horsepower uh yeah <laughs> roll it's pretty it's, fun yeah that's cool it's yeah that's fun this is baby yeah you haven't even been for a ride yet. i know you know soon Good summer soon yeah i just wish yeah, it's all tucked away in storage right. right now i wish you could fly up here but there's too many dirt roads you just have to go really yeah. slow <laughs> yeah no kidding yeah i don't <laughs> I cringe when I hear any gravel hitting right. the side of that. Oh yeah, car. no, for sure. I don't blame you. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Let's see. I'm kind of a horror movie buff. Yeah. I, I love uh, horror movies. Stuff like that uh, is definitely interesting to me. I certainly um, am. Heidi's too scary to watch him with me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what else. I'm. I'm kind of a boring person that way. I've kind yeah. of, you know, uh, kind of got the blinders on to doing a lot of different stuff. Oh, one more thing. I do like, uh, of course, with the car, uh, taking drives to cool natural attractions, which sure. obviously fishing is a great way to do that. Yep. Um, but just love seeing neat, uh, you know, uh, geographical locations and uh, like the Mississippi River and just yep. cool places like that. And devil's lake or just you know waterfalls or stuff like that i don't know just like yeah. seeing uh, uh get out and seeing new places <laughs> yeah exactly for sure uh, hopefully we're going to get to do more and more of that uh here yep. so, yeah fishing wise definitely so yeah we spent a lot of time on that one but some little yeah. interesting whatever maybe boring as i'll get out but uh, <laughs> could be could. that's what we got <laughs> uh let's see here uh, Dustin Loveland wants to know how do we break down a daunting uh, lake such as Vermilion, uh, where every piece of structure looks like it looks hold. awesome. Yeah, that's, right. yeah, that is kind of a that's an awesome question. And uh, book AJ, <laughs> kidding. Yeah, fish with the guy that's been <laughs> out there. Yeah, he, I mean that dude, um, put in he fishes every single day of the week, every he, day, pretty much, pretty much. So. I mean, he knows where those fish are sitting on. What if it's rocks, if it's, you know, sand or whatever it is, kind of knows where they are. So, I mean, his rates are really affordable. So if you're going to be up there for a week, book them that first day and then you're dialed right. for the, rest of the week. So it's kind of a, but. Sure. I, How do we pick it apart? Uh, I would say. Yeah, wind it goes back to wind i really sure. pay a, a lot of attention to wind and where the wind prevailing wind has been blowing what is either the warmest water available excuse me or if you have uh in the middle of summer where you're getting uh potentially too warm a water excuse me holy <laughs> you can clutch getting clutch bombs baby <laughs> oh man jeepers <laughs> Woo. uh so yeah feeling peppy here um at any rate, yeah, he's so, gonna be on the uh, treadmill, but <laughs> the squirrels be on the treadmill. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, looking for the coolest water available if it's been a hot water period. So that's another thing to look at uh, during the summer months as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the wind is just the biggest thing. Look for yeah, that's some big uh, water. 
<laughs> yeah. And it's basically, you know, you have kind of these little microclimates, climates, so to speak, on the lake where you get different areas where the water temp just really varies dramatically. Sure. So, um, yeah, I think the interesting thing that we found on not last year, but year prior fishing with AJ, it was kind of a cooler water year. Uh, the water temps were not getting yep. up. Those fish, when they would come to the boat, if you slowed that bait down, they would eat it. <laughs> that was a weird day. Up, yeah, yeah. They're gone. Yeah. Like, all right. What were you we saying? What did AJ kept calling us? The tourist figure eights? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The lazy eight. <laughs> yeah. Tourist figure eights. Right. Keep it slow. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, go fish with age. Yeah, yeah he's a good time. Awesome time. <laughs> Action Jackson. Right, right. He's the best looking guy on Lake Vermillion. So yep. he tells us. Yep. That's <laughs> it. He's the man. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, Robbie, uh, could you talk flipping tube baits for spring musky? Uh, Camden Drapo wants to hear about that. What do you want to know? <laughs> no, it's a very cool technique that uh, we learned this in Virginia from Brent Perky and the crew down there. And uh, First time we saw that, he was actually using a big grub, eight inch grub or whatever that was, a Magambo one. Or, and I mean, I think this this tactic really prevails when it's you're fishing current muskies and there's really not that many clear water rivers by us. But, anyways, I uh, took that little tip from him. I, that was so crazy, though. I mean, it was. He just flipped it out there and that <laughs> baby just slurped it in. That was insane. But, uh, anyways, yeah, I took that um advice from them those guys down there and i think took it to that same year caught a smaller one doing it um but yeah all it is is just that one ounce kalins uh jig head it's like the darter head jig um and that big curly tail i think the biggest thing is though having that big lead like it really needs a pound the bottom i think that's kind of the trick i've heard of guys catching them on super small you know obviously bass baits too but from whatever it seems this year I per, like particularly it was that big you know that's a five inch tube it's a pretty big profile but the way that thing will pound the bottom um i think that gets their attention and for whatever reason that time of year they are after i don't know why they want to eat things off the bottom but the I don't bottom know, yeah i don't know if it's good all year round if you're, if you're fishing like a clear summer lake and you saw one shallow flipping didn't wasn't able to do that this year but for whatever reason during that cold water period when a lot of the lakes are clear it uh it seems to work but uh yeah i think the same thing happens in the summer take for instance the uh uh 53 you got up on leech lake when you were bottom bound sure right 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 you just don't see it you know right right you don't get the enjoyable watching a musky swim to your jig and slurp it up Super cool. I, I am so pumped. Hopefully it is a cold spring. So, you know, when, when things open up, up here in June, I could still try to find one of those clear water giants up shallow up here and to sight fish a fifth Northern Wisconsin 50 inch would I could retire. <laughs> I, that'd be insane. Absolutely. That would be nuts. Yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely have a, a trailer hook as you learned from this year's video. Uh, I was using 70 pound titanium wire with uh i think that was like a i don't know what size owner hook that was treble hook but it was a saltwater hook i think it's an eight aught i'm pretty sure yeah really that tiny or i thought so I forget. maybe it's a ten. i bought them to replace the um treble hooks on the mullet shed so i wonder what size hook that is you know that for saltwater fishing sure sure basically that size hook <clears throat> yeah that was fun um, yeah having that heavy bait like you said yeah. you got to be able to get that thing to get to the bottom quick when you spot a fish that's well, another part of the weight yeah well i mean the one of the craziest things that i didn't even mention that video because i was so jacked up and i failed to mention a lot of things but i mean we we're sight fishing those things in eight feet of water so you did need a bait that was going to hit the bottom as soon as possible when you saw one of those fish so yeah, that was cool. There's no, oh my gosh, I can't wait to go do that again. <laughs> that was an eye opener for me. The first one, Robbie took me out to do that and I hadn't really yeah. done it before. And 
And the first fish he locked onto, he tossed it out and that fish ate it now. Just, oh, that was insane. Like, I don't even know. I mean, the thing looks spooked. Like, there's no reason for that thing to bite, but it did. Right. And the, yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> Super cool, though. Let's see. Next question. Mark King asked, uh, asking me, I'm assuming, how and why you started building baits. Obviously, Robbie uh, has as well, too. Um, how? Uh, basically, I just wanted better tools of, you know, each kind of lure category that was available. And long time ago in the winter of 1998, my mom says, Lee, all the baits out there, how come you don't have your own lure? So <laughs> moms are always right. I, <laughs> that, that next day went to Menards, got uh, a coat hanger rod, you know, dowel or whatever, and yeah. a wood file and a coping saw. And it was the top H2O. <laughs> and that's how it started so yeah just had to have had to have something to do in the winter too when yeah. uh, i was not guiding uh in the winter months so some way of income that's not <laughs> can't right can't exactly fish muskies when the lakes are frozen so for sure yep uh let's see here moving right along see if anything kind of pops up uh let's go over to instagram here and see what's rolling over there. sure i do have that up okay from carter simon underscore i want to get into the fishing industry after college i'd love to do what you guys are do but that's probably not an option what career would you recommend for someone who absolutely loves musky fishing hmm. um true it's a tough one it's a <laughs> it, it is a awesome goal and um I mean, I was just fortunate I was able to meet Lee, my parents that would back me no matter what, and they believed in me. And that was that was a huge thing. Um, but man, what would be similar? I mean, fisheries biologists, you know, you do something with, you know, stupid, you go. something like that. Um, working with the DNR is absolutely if it was if you're not fishing for them, but working with them studying with muskies that's that's second best in my opinion that that's something that i considered too so um yeah i would say fisheries route that would be definitely the closest way to do it uh possibly like a, a fishing tackle rep uh, yep. you know oh, one of the sure. major manufacturers out there you know a real manufacturer or rod or something you yep. know, something like that um yeah that's uh, if you if you want it bad enough, you just go make it happen. Right, right. Find a way to do it. Yep, that's kind of the way to do it. If you really think you can, go for it. Nobody is stopping you. Uh, yeah, who, who would have thought we would have got to this point? Of right. What we're doing. <laughs> Thank right, you, yeah. everyone. We yes, exactly, it. exactly. You got another one? Um, I don't know if you. Want to spill the beans on this one, but we'll ask it anyways. How many new ideas do you have for new Lee lures and what type of lure will it be? Top water or something else? Oh man. Um, <laughs> well, we've got the crankbait coming out here shortly. Yep. Uh, on that. I'm so pumped for that one. Yeah. Uh, new uh, uh, small <laughs> twitch bait, basically a five and a half inch uh, variation of like a husky jerk. You know, it'll be yep. suspended bait death rise uh death pause minnow um <laughs> so yeah, yeah that's very um, exciting <laughs> it'll be cool yeah it'll you know finally a bait that'll cross over into the bass and walleye world as well which is exciting um but yeah like that's the next on the docket uh the problem is with the custom lure company is you can only make so many baits it's really limited uh there's just a handful of us that are involved making these. So that's why my website is out of stock a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, as far as what new or different, I mean, um, there's probably one of the bigger options that people are missing on is, is baits that go deep really quick. Um, that, that's something obviously rubber is, you know, a good uh, plan of attack for that. Um, yeah, I don't know what's next to be totally honest. Um, kind of spill kind of went crazy this year. So I think you got some time. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. The just trying to keep up with what I've got going on yeah. now is probably the biggest. Yeah. How many how many products do you have on the website now? In stock or how many are there? Yeah, catalog like there? catalog. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Man, uh, I don't know. I know. It, it's, it's that's a, there's a lot of different baits up there. I mean, you gotta be dang thirty. Oh yeah, I would say close to thirty. I'll around say, yeah. thirty could be more. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> a lot of them I haven't made for a long time, but right. and would love to. Right. Um, creep. Get the creep show rolling again. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Creepers. I kind of yep. hate making creepers. Yeah. yeah I don't blame those you are me. hard. I've seen you tune those things. And <laughs> yeah. I still don't think I can tune a creeper. I don't know how, but I've watched Lee show me this multiple times. So we do need to make a video about tuning topwaters to, you know, that I can go back to. <laughs> I don't get it. Well, yeah. All this, all the videos we've done, why have we right. not done a in-depth Super topwater good one. type vid? Yep. Um, Cause it's, it's going to be really hard, really detailed and, you know, in depth. So, yeah. Get, getting the sounds right and everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a whole nother topic. Um, what you got next, Robbie? Uh, targeting open water, Minnesota Metro fish. Never really thought about this one. I'm surprised there's not more guys doing it. If, I mean, the big thing open water is for million granted there's right. goes out there, but I mean, those panfish still go out too i mean those minnesota metro lakes they're so healthy uh no doubt i would say start trolling or i mean with side imaging now you can just drive around yeah. find those pods of bait fish to your left or your right and start casting if you really wanted to that would that would probably be the easiest way to do it uh poseidons obviously medusas yeah swim baits yep swim baits yeah. swim me over there i mean yeah th that's that's been keeping me really busy right I mean, the biggest thing is, I mean, those fish are going to be 10, 10 feet high up probably most of the time. So you can fish them pretty high. Right. Top 10. Yeah. Five to 10 feet. Yep. I'm hoping I can get into that this June. Need to, need to find some, some waters that'll be good for that. Yeah. It'd be nice if there was a few more fish. But... Yeah. That's <laughs> always the problem. Yeah. You know, you get all excited about something when you look at the stocking numbers up here and it's kind of defeats a lot of things but that's all right there's still fish to be had they're big up here still which will be topic matter on upcoming videos too yeah 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 i'm excited for that um hey robbie how's my light doing it's starting to get a little darker here yeah we only got like 10 minutes left so we'll be all right, right. yeah oh well, cool all right you got something else there um i don't know if we should that's a lot of questions. Uh, that's a lot. I got a good one. I got a good okay. one. Uh, is there a story behind your Wicked Ways intro song? Oh, what? perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of a... Uh, that's Andrew, <laughs> uh, the previous editor. You want to go on that? Yeah. Um, he was in his uh, apartment. He was still in college then. And I think he was up at like 2 a.m. And we were like, well... I think if you'd like to make us a intro, that would be great. And he just found a, you know, I'm not into EDM music. I know at least you're not into EDM music. And uh, it's definitely right. not like, uh, a, like a song for fishing at all. No. But no. it just, I don't know why it works so good. I don't know. Um, there's really no reason for it other than the way he cut it all together. And yeah. I, I mean, we, we want to do a new intro, but it's like, how do you top that? We want a new song, but it's like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> guys, send us music if you want. Maybe, maybe that's the way to do it. Have you guys kind of sure. pick a song that we could possibly use for a new intro? Because uh, I've scrolled and there's just nothing that beats that one. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Andrew Natvig uh, definitely nailed it on that one. Yeah, um, for sure uh you know it was definitely a late night for him when he came yeah. up with that and you know what we should do we'll have to do a video where we put that entire song in a video it would be really entertaining uh sure. we'll, obviously we can put a link to that entire yeah. song which will blow your mind that that's our song right. that's <laughs> weird yeah there's a lot of weird stages of that song <laughs> yeah yeah it's a I'm good a fan song, of good but i don't know yeah i don't know not my speed. Anyway, 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, what do you got? What do you got? I got Anything? one. Yeah. Yep. Uh, favorite fishing memory or favorite musky story? That's probably what we'll wrap up our, our little first podcast here. We're getting close to an hour. Um, huh. Wow, this gets harder every year. Everything, something new, exciting always happens. <laughs> um, I don't know. I do really like that that uh, that Saint Clair musky, that that forty pounder or whatever that Heidi and I got. That was oh yeah, that was a cool adventure. Uh, we hooked up the boat, Madison drove you know six and a half seven hours. We had three days of camping, and. Uh, yeah, I think it was the first, felt like two days anyways. I don't know. It might have been just a day and a half of fishing, but it was just two days of, I just wanted to fish the rivers. And um, I figured, well, I mean, the Fox River is good in Green Bay. Why well, wouldn't the rivers connected to St. Clair be just as good? And not seeing anything and uh, nothing shallow, nothing, just catching the small pike. And Ducci's like, well, I've heard of walleye guys catching them here this time of year. So I was like, all right, gave me that spot five minutes of jigging that tube and boom it was on well i mean just an amazing battle on that on that small rod that was just incredible that little corrado bass flipping st- stick <laughs> and and you know that if you guys ever been in the st Clair river that river just rips so the current's awesome it was just such a perfect eddy spot where that fish was sitting and that was amazing i don't think you can i don't know that's a hard one to top absolutely <laughs> incidentally that's one of my favorite videos to watch uh, with Robbie completely hyperventilating like a little girl, <laughs> and it, it was blowing my <laughs> mind. That uh, was blowing my mind. Oh my gosh! Free spawn Saint Clair fish. Ah, uh, that was cool. Yeah, just a, a YouTube superstar, right, Lee? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> uh, that was funny. All right. That's that's, that's cool. the thing with you guys fishing out there put one camera out, wear a chesty, put one on the bow right. of your boat, um, just, just film everything. Just in case something crazy happens. Gosh, I mean, yeah. I want to be you have to put it on YouTube, right? I want to be here at 70 years old, watching some stuff that I did when I was younger. Absolutely. Show my grandkids or something. Who knows? You know, just like, there's so many cool options. If you film all your fishing, fishing videos or whatever footage, but yeah, no, that's definitely a top one for me. Let's see. There's one more quick little one. Uh, hey, Lee, you uh, didn't say yours. You didn't say yours. Oh, memory. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Probably one of my top favorite uh, catches was when Robbie got the 50 pounder on Malak. Yeah. yeah wow. It's a hard one to beat, too. <laughs> There's just been some crazy stuff the last four, what, four or five, five, almost six years of fishing together. Yeah, right. Been- For sure. Wow. Um, and I actually, know now that I think of it, we're coming up on year number four for today's angler on YouTube. Uh, is this it coming really? March. We'll be number March. four. Holy cow. Our four years. And then, yeah, I think you and I, we started filming. I was holding the camera in 2014, I believe. Yeah. That's right. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. That's just not right. That's, where did it go? Where did it go? <laughs> Super cool, though. I'm just happy we got all you guys along with us yeah that's that's incredible for sure yeah um yeah so many great memories air jaws oh. just the most crazy musky jumps ever on camera that oh, yeah. kind of stuff Tw- Tw- yeah 12 fish St. Clair, <laughs> 41 bites in, in yep. uh two days just yeah. insane stuff so uh, nothing too yeah, crazy this cool. year unfortunately not yet yeah, we're just getting rolling here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see one quick other little thing. Okay, so Phillips Nick thirty four wants to know how can we fish uh, with you, and unfortunately, uh, I've taken myself off the guiding schedule currently. May do some in the future yet, um, but just uh, kind of running out of time uh, to do everything involved. Yep. So, but I know Robbie, you're still running some trips. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't do many this year just because I totally knew to, you know, the water up here didn't want to take people out where I didn't know much about. So 
Um, but yeah, no, definitely learned a lot this year and hopefully be taking some trips um, starting in June. So that would be fun. Man, how has this been an hour? We haven't even gotten a fraction Nothing. of what we wanted to go through here today. Well, I mean, we can do another one, you know? I mean, <laughs> I, I don't mind this. I really enjoy this because it is super cold outside. There's no reason to be outside. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, but yeah. I think we'll probably try to keep these in an hour. We're we got a pretty awesome guest coming up here on Thursday that uh hopefully blow some people's minds. Um I think it will. Yeah. I'm gonna It'll be interesting. Go. Maybe, maybe two guests. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm yeah. stoked about that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, maybe we'll just kind of have these question and answer style videos. Um, because they're fun to do. You guys get to learn more about us and we like to answer some questions. Um, yeah, yeah, it's limitless what we can do, how, you yeah. know, all the different people, uh, you know, very specific <laughs> topic matter, obviously, we couldn't get through a lot. But oh, yeah. uh, I think that'll be a good way to do it is specific topic matter. Yes. And then, you know, maybe starting out with what's been up lately, and right? What we've been right. doing so. Yep. So no, this is a great way for Lee and I to stay connected too. you know? <laughs> no kidding. This Robbie, this is the longest I've had to talk with you since we've been on the ice the last right, time. Right, right. So, uh, no, this way. Oh, so we got awesome. our butts kicked too. Right. Oh, yeah. I guess, yeah. We should, I don't know why we didn't start off with that. Should we tell yeah. them why we don't have any videos in the last two weeks? We tried. We did try. And then it got brutally cold and. Yeah, even know what you do in that temperature. I know guys are out there; they're hardcore, and I, ah. yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, forty well, below. That doesn't yeah. interest me. Up no, there. no, it does not interest me one bit. So, yeah, looking like next week might be able to pop down. There's some awesome weather coming. Thirty degrees. It's like mid. Yeah. Might be slushy, but it's all right. Better than freezing cold. <laughs> Just above zero is gonna feel warm at this point. Right. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Oh, we had a jump. I think Heidi's and I cars like probably four times this week, last two weeks. <laughs> and I have a fresh battery too. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. But um, yeah, is that pretty much it? Yeah, I don't know. I guess uh to wrap it up, make sure you uh check out uh or look forward to the musky show coming up. At, yep. uh, at in Wausau, March 19th uh, and 20th. Uh, yep. So yeah, a musky show. It's going to be cool. Looking forward to that. Um, obviously, comment below what uh, topic matter you're interested in, uh, guess, uh, yep. what have you. Yeah, and um, if you don't want to watch us, you can check it out on any streaming thing. Hopefully, we'll have a Spotify account, Apple Music, and I think we'll for sure have it on Podbean right away. We'll have all the links on Facebook, Instagram to get you guys over there if you want to, if you're driving or whatnot. I love podcasts, so yeah, it's it works good. I don't know. It's a really good good way to pass time when you're driving. That's how I always feel. So, yeah. Good for windshield time. Good for, you know, I'll have stuff on like that when I'm working building baits. You oh, know, yeah. Where I don't have to look at it. Yep. So. I'll pop the Joe Rogan on for three hours and. It's like nothing oh, yeah. been happened. <laughs> so always enjoy that. Yep. All right. So guys, thank you so much for watching, listening, and uh see you on the next one, hopefully soon. <laughs> see you guys. Thank you very much. Bye.